Thanks for watching this free video tutorial, which is a free sample from our course Comprehensive Introduction to Corona for 3ds Max. It is a massive 9 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Corona for 3ds Max thoroughly. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out. In this lesson, we talk about the basics of interior lighting in Corona. For this, we will be using this interior scene, which you can download it from Chaos Group website. After logging in, uh, in the resources section under free 3ds Max scenes, you can download this one. I have adjusted the scene a bit to make it a bit more suitable for this particular topic. We have only this one opening, which is this sliding door that leads to the balcony. We have some simple furniture and that's it. For lighting an interior scene, you would normally use a simple Corona Sun and Sky, but you can also use an HDRI map if you are looking for a certain color cast in your interiors. We will be learning both in this lesson. In the material editor, we have this default Corona material applied to all the geometries in the scene. So it's going to be a simple clay render, but it's going to be much easier to understand how the interior lighting process works when we are dealing with such a simple shading. The only thing that I have adjusted in the material is a diffuse color. Instead of using the default 128 mid gray value, I have made it a bit brighter to about 145. Now, close the material editor and let's get back to the quad view and start adding a Corona Sun from the top view. and we can adjust the elevation of the sun in the front view. Now we need to define Corona Sky as our environment. So go to the Corona Sun's modify panel and add Corona Sky environment. Now we can run the interactive rendering. The first thing to adjust is to increase the highlight compression to probably something like 3 so we can get rid of those burnout areas. We can clearly see the direction of the sunlight right now. We can also adjust the position of the sun until we get what we like. Good. For this one, we can probably increase the exposure by half a stop and set it to about 0.5. And now we probably need to increase the highlight compression to compensate for that to something like 9. And now we get our beautiful interior lighting without doing much really. As we talked about in the global illumination lessons, when lighting an interior scene, the secondary GI solver should be always set to a UHD cache. Now let's quickly discuss Corona portal material. In 3D rendering, there is something called portals or portal lights. It's a very old concept and they are about to go extinct as the render engines are getting more intelligent. But what they do for interior lighting is that you place a portal on every opening in the room, normally uh, windows, doors, if the doors are open, and that portal tells the lighting to focus its sampling inside the room. And this way we get cleaner render faster. In Corona, you use portals if the openings are relatively small. If you have small windows in your scene, using portals can give you much cleaner renders way faster. In this particular scene, we have this huge opening. So probably using portals wouldn't be that important and wouldn't make such a difference. But we see how to use portals in Corona anyways and test if using portals can benefit us in this particular scene or not. So to sum up, if your windows, your openings are very small or relatively small, uh, you need to use portals. But if you have huge openings and a lot of light comes in, you don't need to use portals in Corona. The way to add portals in Corona is to cap that opening with one simple plane and then apply a Corona portal material to the plane and that's it. If I go to the perspective view and take a look at the scene from the balcony, you should place your portals in a way that there wouldn't be any geometries behind it. 
in this scene, we should probably put it right in front of the balcony in here. For most scenes, when there is no geometry behind the windows, you would place your portal so they would cap the windows. In this scene, let's cap this balcony opening with a simple plane. Now let's rename this plane geometry to something more recognizable. You can name it underscore portal so it would go to the top of the explorer list. Now to make it an actual portal, we need to assign a Corona portal material to it. So press M to open up material editor. Right click, materials, Corona and add a Corona portal material. As you can see, it has no option. You just create it and assign it. And now you can assign it to the portal geometry that we created. And that's it. Now we have a portal to assist with the lighting. I want to test to see if in this scene using a portal can be beneficial. So let's get back to our camera view. First, let's have a render without the portal and set a 30 seconds limit on our render. Now make sure our portal geometry is not renderable so it wouldn't affect the lighting for this first render. Simply select the portal light and go to its properties and make it not renderable. Also in the render settings under the scene tab, set a 30 seconds limit for the render and make sure there is no denoising because we want to see the actual unadulterated render. Now let's start the render. So this is our first render without any portals. We can store it in our history. Now make the portal geometry renderable and uh, let's render the scene again for another 30 seconds. Store this render as well. Set the first render without any portal as uh, A by left clicking on it and the second one which has the portals as B by right clicking on it. If we compare the two render, the left side is the one without any portals and the right side is the one with portals enabled. Uh, in this comparison, I can't notice any visible difference between the two. Maybe on top of the bed, we see slightly cleaner render, but nothing too much. So in this case, we probably don't need any portals but let's keep it anyways for good measures. The next thing would be to put a skyline or a landscape image behind the windows as a background. So it wouldn't be just this simple white color from the Corona sky. For this, we are going to be using Corona light material. I have this hidden plane right behind the building and we want to apply our landscape image to this plane so it's visible through the window. In the material editor, load this img underscore 0115.jpg image which is a free backplate from hdrihaven.com add a corona light material and use this bitmap as the text map input and make sure to turn off emit light for the corona light material because we don't want it to contribute anything to the lighting the lighting is finished and done we just want it to be self illuminated. So let's assign the Corona light material to the backplate plane and run the interactive rendering. We can actually draw a region around this window while we're adjusting the image. Let's set the tiling to negative one on both U and V. Set the U and V offset for the image to about 0.8 and 
1.76 or just 76 obviously to make sure the image matches with the lighting we can increase the intensity of the light material to around four and that's it for the final render, we just need to enable full denoising and make sure there is no time limit for our render and render the scene for a few minutes. So let's start the render here. I'm gonna stop the render as I've already rendered the scene for 64 passes and saved out the render as a CXR file. So let me just open it up in the Corona image editor. You can see we have this, uh, obviously this is the uh, render with the denoising set to 0.65. We can increase the contrast to about 2.5, uh, filmic shadows to about 0.5, and we can obviously control our denoising as we wish. And now we can save out a JPEG or a PNG version of your of our render to the disk. What I want to do now is to use an HDRI image instead of the Corona Sun and Sky. So just uh, let me save out this current 3ds Max file so we don't mess with what we have. Let's select the Corona Sun and turn it off for now. Press 8 and remove Corona Sky from the environment. And let's hide our backplate geometry. Now we have no light in the scene. Open up the material editor and load this uh, The Sky is on Fire HDRI from hdrihaven.com, which is a free one. To be able to control its exposure, as we learned previously, we can connect the map to a Corona color correct node and now use the color correct node in the environment slot. Let's run the interactive rendering. And now we get this gorgeous lighting because we have that beautiful sunset HDRI in our environment. Select the color correct node and increase the exposure of the HDRI to about two. Now using the U offset, offset the HDRI around and based on the angle, you get different lighting and moods. And obviously you can try other HDRIs with different uh, color casts and different times of day too have a different mood and different color cast. I'm going to use 0.9 as the U offset for now. And let's increase the scene exposure to uh, 1.5. This by itself is a very gorgeous render, but if you want, you can obviously add the Corona Sun to the current render and try to decrease the intensity so it's a bit more matched with the lighting and make uh, the size a bit bigger so it pr produces diffuser shadows because we're dealing with a sunset lighting and probably use a Kelvin volume color like 2500 or 3000 degrees for the sun so it matches with the tonality of the HDRI that we are using in the environment. For now, let me just enable our background geometry which was called backplate plane. In the material editor, load this bitmap from HDRI Haven, which is actually one of the backplate images for the sky, the skies on fire HDRI that we worked with previously. Create a Corona light material and make sure it doesn't emit any light. Before connecting the image to the text map input of the Corona light material, 
connected to a Corona tone map control. I'm telling you why in a moment and uh, now connect the output of the tone map to the light material and run the interactive rendering. Let's draw another region here. Set the tiling of the map to negative one and negative one and V offset 2.77. Set the corona light material intensity to 4. If you take a look at the render, when I actually adjust the exposure of the shot, the background image as well will be adjusted, which in this case uh, makes it a bit washed out, not quite desirable, and I really don't uh, want that. Corona tone map control allows you to selectively tell Corona if you don't want an image to be affected by exposure, tone mapping, or lookup tables in the Corona frame buffer. So if I disable exposure in the tone map node and uh, we adjust the exposure uh, in our Corona frame buffer, you can see the background map won't be adjusted and stays the same. Let's make sure the exposure is set to 1.5 again. Now let's start the final render. I've already rendered this scene, so let's open up the CXR version of the render. This is our render with uh, the noising applied. The highlight compression is set to none, which is good. You can probably decrease it a tad, but let's set it to nine for now. Increase the contrast to 3 and filming shadows to 0.5 and hey, it's a gorgeous render. In this lesson, we learned about interior lighting in Corona. See you in the next lesson. Thanks for watching this free video tutorial which is a free sample from our course Comprehensive Introduction to Corona for 3ds Max. It is a massive 9 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Corona for 3ds Max thoroughly. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out.